Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, September 18. There are indications that the Jamaican economy may grow more than originally expected in the next fiscal year. The initial growth target was between 1.5 and 2 percent. Based upon identified products, projects, particularly in tourism and in relation to renewable energy, there is prospect for the 15-16 year, fiscal year, for growth to exceed this and to extend into the range of 3% or more. The finance minister was speaking on Wednesday at a post-cabinet retreat press briefing where he announced the formation of a subcommittee to identify and remove impediments to growth projects. A technical secretariat to support the committee will also be established within the Development Bank of Jamaica. And steps are already underway to secure appropriate staffing and to have a technical subcommittee paralleling the work of the ministerial subcommittee that has been established. The two-day cabinet retreat marked an early start to the 2015-2016 budget preparations. Under the new fiscal rules incorporated into the Financial Administration and Audit Act, government is now required to pass a budget before the start of an upcoming financial year. Parliament will also have to pass a supplementary budget before the end of this calendar year. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson has sought to assure the country that the ministry is handling the chikungunya virus. He's urging Jamaicans not to panic, asserting that the ministry is following established protocol in dealing with chikungunya. We are operating within the framework of a protocol determined by the World Health Organization and the Pan American Health Organization. And that protocol is what guides us. Minister Ferguson was speaking following a tour of the Yalas Primary School in St. Thomas where there's been concern that the high levels of absenteeism among both teachers and students is as a result of the chikungunya virus. The minister also revealed that even as the school remains open, an investigation into the high absenteeism at the school has been launched. Although no mosquito breeding sites were identified, Dr. Ferguson said the ministry fumigated the school as a precautionary measure. In education, the Early Childhood Commission, the ECC, is reporting that it has exceeded expectations since its inception 10 years ago. At a recent function in St. James, ECC Commissioner Dr. Rose Davies noted that the organization has achieved much in that decade. When you consider the abundance of new and essential and important data that have been generated by the ECC in the last 10 years, that can support the forward planning for the early childhood sector. I think we can all agree on one thing, and that is that for a 10-year-old, the ECC has achieved way beyond its expectations since its birthday. And as part of activities to celebrate its anniversary, the ECC has been rewarding outstanding teachers in the sector across several parishes. In St. James, 10 teachers with an accumulated 416 years of service to the early childhood sector were honored by the ECC. Also in St. James, the Cornwall College now has a 120-seat chapel built at a cost of $33 million. Construction on the building began in 2012. It includes offices for the school's chaplain and secretary along with bathrooms. Speaking at a recent dedication ceremony, the Ministry of Education's Western Regional Director, Hilary Foster, noted that the construction of the chapel is yet another historic achievement for the school. Effective January 2015, all sawmill and power saw operators must be registered and licensed with the Forestry Department to operate legally in Jamaica. Permanent Secretary Alwyn Hills said the registration program was a necessary intervention in the government's efforts to preserve and conserve the island's forests. There is no question about the Ministry's commitment not only to preserve and conserve the island's forest cover, but also to educate and engaged communities across the length and breadth of Jamaica about the importance of our forests to our lives and livelihoods. A license is required whether the source of the lumber is from private or public lands. The application fee is $15,000 and once granted, the license is valid for one year. And that's it for GIS News Today. Amanda Chisholm, thank you for watching.